Three, two. You don't say two. I didn't say two. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're back from break. So I'm just going to roll through a few pictures of some multifamily dwellings. This happens to be a McEwen, a fourplex. So um, just the way these are laid out, they're all built pretty much the same. And so this one story apartment on the front side, this is the alpha apartment. Okay, then you walk around to this side and you've got a two story um, Bravo apartment. Door down on the ground floor, of course, and kitchen and living room downstairs, a couple bedrooms upstairs. And on the other side of the building, on the Delta side, you have a mirror apartment of that. On the back side, you have a similar apartment to this one here, a single story apartment, but it's on the second floor. And there's garage, two two-car garages underneath. And then between the two-car garages, you've got a, a utility room, a laundry room that the tenants all have access to. So um, when you look at the gas and power meters, there will be five gas meters and five electric meters. And the fifth gas and electric meter is for that laundry room. Okay, so, um, but there are four residences in here and you need to knock and talk on each one of them. This one happens to be down in Galt. If you look through the trees here, that's station 44 right there. Okay, here's a triplex. Now this building over here, what's that look like? Looks like a big ass house. Looks like a big ass house. Could be, uh, you know, the, the guy down in Galt who said, hey, we're going to build a house, but I get three garages. <laughs> yeah, but it's actually a triplex. So three garages is kind of a giveaway. But this is just a wood frame house like a normal um, single family dwelling house. Uh, but I think we have a common attic here. So like a fire over here could end up over there. Um, so you can see it's, it's a little bit bigger than your normal house. But labor-wise, we're talking a lot more intensity here with the triplex. What would you call this over here? Okay. Yeah, it's kind of a funky building, but boil it down to the simple, it's a two-story garden apartment. So if we all call it that, then we know what it is. You know, doors open to the outside. Two-story garden. Here's another Galt luxury garden apartment. Okay, so this is a two-story garden apartment. There are a couple of one-story wings, but this back here is two-story garden. You can see all the doors open to the outside. There's some access egress stairwells here. Okay, so depending on where a fire is in, in this building will um, dictate what your challenge is going to be. So that's a garden apartment. Here's a center hallway. This happens to be a hotel, okay, a two-story hotel. You um, access a lobby area, and then you get to the rooms from inside the building. So a two-story hotel. So knowing your first due and knowing your second due, what do we see right there? Hydrant. Okay, a hydrant. And I'm told also that there's a fire department connection right there by that hydrant. So, you know, if you pull in there second and you're going to take command and they want you to pump the standpipe, where do we find it? Is it there? Or is it just a sprinkler system? What is it? What do we have? Usually this type of construction would have a combination. That's your center hallway. Low rise. What are some of the low rises we have? Four stories. Okay. Hilton Garden, right? What else is there? There's uh, the Hampton Inn. Uh, somebody say Bilby? Bilby's a three-story, but definitely very complex with all the people in there. There's also um, areas of refuge in there and fire doors that will close and, and contain things. Um, so if you ever get a chance you're in there doing a medical aid, just kind of take a look at it fire-wise and think, eh, what, what, are, what happens in this place when, when it's on fire? So you have your low-rise training guide. The thing with the low-rise training guide is it mentions Al's base. And what is Al's base? Where does that come from? It comes from high rise, right? It stands for attack, lobby, staging, and then base is base. So here we have a, whether it's a high rise building or a low rise building, 
Al's base can work. So what's the first thing we're going to do? Fire. Attack the fire, right? We got to get somebody to where the indication of the fire is and figure out what's going on. So fire attack is, is high on the priority list. Um, lobby, what does lobby do? Okay, and so in our, in our small four stories, how much work do you think there's going to be for lobby? Are they going to go into this fire control room and have complex lights and buzzers? No, okay. You're going to get control of the elevators and bring them down, and you're going to find out from the staff what's going on and make sure that you're evacuating that ground floor. So, but you want to, you want to get, gain control of that and maintain control of that so that you can help with the, the uh, evacuation of people. Um, staging. Staging. Where is that? Isn't that where we park our fire engines? In a high rise, it's where you park your people, right? So same thing can apply in a low rise. You've got four stories, fires on the fourth floor. Where's the best place to stash all your people? Two floors below, right? So it can apply. Um, but what if your fire's on the second floor? Where do you stash all your people? Outside, Outside or in the lobby, maybe? Someplace different, right? So just kind of go through that training guide and, and think about that. And then when you go out and look at these buildings, contemplate. Okay, fire's on the second floor. What am I going to do? Fire's on the third floor. What, what should it look like? Okay, and then base, that's where we park all our rigs, right? So that's going to hopefully not be right up against the building. We're going to push it back a little bit and uh, give us a little bit of room to operate around the building. Okay, so you guys can go over the low-rise training guide. And that's the end of that. So, but what I do want to show you is hopefully where we're going in the future. And it depends on a few things, but I'm going to load on here my Fire Studio disk. Since this is an older program and any of the digital pictures that I get today are eight gazillion pixels and, uh, you know, this is an older program, it doesn't seem to recognize them or I'm not smart enough to figure out um, how to format it so it fits in here. But there are some canned pictures in here that we can use that are multifamily dwellings and we can practice. So I'm going to add this one right here. And this is not from Galt, but doesn't that look like a Galt residence? Okay, so what would we call this? Okay, two-story garden, garden-style apartment. Um, who would like to walk us through a little scenario here? Anybody? Any takers? All righty. Squally's going to go. All right, so... You don't know where the smoke is. You don't know where the smoke is. Okay, I'm going to put the smoke right here. So there's a couple things. There's a couple things that you can do. Um, the purpose of this training is not just to square you away for a promotional exam. It definitely can help for that, but the purpose of this training is to make you a better fire officer or a better firefighter, and so. What you can do is you can talk through this. Anybody use FPOD P? Does anybody know what FPOD P is? Okay, it's going back a few years, but it stands for your facts, your probabilities, your own situation, your decision, and your plan. So the facts are, okay, it's the middle of the night and I'm responding to a reported structure fire. When I arrive, this is what I see. And you can kind of talk that out um, out loud. The, pr the probabilities are that there are people home and this is a rescue and I'm going to have to employ a lot of labor to get to these people. My own situation is I'm an engine company officer. I'm responding as part of a full first alarm. However, it is in Galt and I'm going to be the first one there for a while. My decision is to take the nozzle to the fire and search the area of the fire and have other companies evacuate the rest of the building. That's my decision. And then my plan is I'm going to communicate this. And then I would get on the radio and I give my arrival report. I can. So when we do this actual type of training, you can 
walk through it first if you want. Um, you can just start with your arrival and give us that. But that's kind of what we're looking for is your size up, your risk management process, a communication of your plan, and then you go to work. Okay? It's taking the fire department so long. Yeah, what is taking them so long? The chief's talking, blah, 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 blah. All right, so Mark, go ahead and uh, tell us what you're going to do on this one. Okay, um, so I'm going to just assume to be Galt, so I'll show up on engine 45. Uh, command, or battalion 10, engine 45 has arrived on the scene. I have a two-story garden-style apartment with uh, heavy smoke showing from second story apartment uh alpha bravo uh, alpha bravo corner right um i'm gonna go ahead get a get a full uh uh get spotted i'm gonna get down that's where i'm gonna take my tactical pause uh get a get a better size up of what we got got going get a, try to get a look down the down the delta side get a look down the uh, bravo side uh, if it's the middle of the night, I'm going to assume that that my units are occupied and that that unit's occupied. Uh, command, engine 45 is going to initiate, uh, initiate offensive fire attack. We're in the rescue mode. Going to pass command and going to need going to need a water supply. And I'm I'm going to go to work at that point with my crew. Okay, good. So we know our strategy. Um, again, this these are easy because. It's a multifamily dwelling, and day or night, they're occupied. So we're going to go right into rescue mode. So if the fire is small enough that you and your company can make an attack, you know, it's not the whole building's on fire, right? So, okay, we're, we know we're going to be offensive, and we're in the rescue mode, but we still want to say it. We don't want to assume it, right? We want to say it. So that was good. Um, who's going to be there, even if you're in Galt, who's hopefully going to be there Medics. okay you're going to hopefully have at least one medic right and so what can they do for you in this situation search on the search, second floor and evacuations. okay awesome do they do they pull a line sure have them pull a line but if they go up if you went left and they go up and they go right and they knock and talk on that one over there and they get it empty and they get everybody down that stairwell now they can either continue the evacuation process or they can help you out. Are you going to have some face-to-face -face activity there on the front lawn by those steps? Yeah, you're going to talk to them. And you can, you can communicate all that stuff face-to-face. -face. You know, you say, hey, okay, we're going into the fire apartment. You search that one right there. Okay, cool. So then you can give a CAN report. You know, Battalion 10, Engine 45, we're entering the upstairs apartment, Alpha Bravo corner. Medic is going to search the Alpha Delta apartment. We're taking fire attack, entry, par of two, air's full. And then you go and you've, you've communicated what everybody's doing. So, I mean, these things don't just roll off your tongue, okay? But, 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 the two-year rule, if we practice this for two years and we settle in on our language, that things that we like to say as a department, and we practice over and over, they'll start to roll off your tongue. They'll start to become muscle memory between your brain and your mouth. And that's what this training does. This type of training where you just throw a picture up there and you train your brain and your mouth to say the things that you want to say following you know, a, a semi-standard plan of communication. Okay, So who else wants to do one? Shepard is up. Okay, watch this. I can put fire out real easy. Ooh, oh, it didn't, it didn't clear. Why didn't it clear? Did I go too far? There we go. All right, I'm going to change it up a little bit, okay? You ready? You ready? Okay. Okay. Now what are you going to do? All right. Uh, units on, I'll be engine 45. Units on A6, County 10, engine 45 is on scene. We have a two-story uh, garden apartment. Uh, reporting heavy smoke on the first floor, Alpha Delta corner, engine 45 will be initiating fire attack on the Alpha Delta corner, second do, assume command, establish a water supply, medic on your arrival, search the floor above on the Alpha Delta side. Perfect. And then pause and 
try to get as much of the big picture as I can, but not delay our entry into that apartment because we're going to have an extension going up if we don't get on it right away. Right. So here's a situation where you're going to take the nozzle right to the fire. Where are the people, if it's occupied, where are the people who are in the most peril? Inside. inside the apartment that's on fire and then secondarily above. right above did we attempt to handle those two problems okay so um, if we could see the Delta side could it tell us maybe that's there's something else that we need to get after first A absolutely you know you might have um, somebody hanging out of a a window in either one of those apartments that's a little bit further away from the fire you know the apartment that's on fire or something so getting a picture of that you still want to try to get the, at least that three-sided view what if, what if this building is has um, four units on the front and four units on the back are you gonna be able to lap that efficiently no you could probably get a Bravo side and a Delta side view and tell you've located now your fire is most likely going to be just in that one corner you're dealing with. Okay. So now your priority is the, the unit that's on fire and the unit above and you get your units, your responders going towards those two objectives through communication and coordination, then you're ahead of this fire. Okay. You're ahead of this fire. Um, you give us that entry report. When you cross that threshold, we know you're going in with a par of two airs full. You're doing fire attack and you're going to search that building. Um, you know, and, and we're, we're going to come running and we'll know what to do to support you when we get there. So here's the deal with this training. Ideally, what we would do is have this technology available to your battalion chief. Um, and you could just set up drills where over WebEx and our portable radios, we could set up drills and we could, we could do this over the internet. So the one computer that um, is broadcasting this through the network to the other computers, you guys are all seeing the same picture. You say, all right, who's, who's up for this one? Okay, 46 will do it. All right, engine 46, here's yours. And then you present the picture to them and then they're talking to you over the internet. Okay, well, I see this one, I see, and we put, you know, our own, our own hazards pictures in here. He said, I know this building, this is, you know, 2428 Chilliwack Street, and this building has, you know, this unique thing about it. So um, here's what I want to do, and now I'm going to give you my arrival report. Then you actually key up the mic, and you give your IO can, and everybody hears it throughout the district, whoever's participating in the drill, and you practice doing this stuff. And then beyond that, you can network this program with a local area network, which there's a whole bunch of computers in this room right here. And we want to build a network here where, um, you know, Marcus, you could come in and I could say, you're on the truck today, okay? So you're responding to a structure fire. Go back to computer number five. And you say, okay, you've got a headset, you've got a radio, you go back and you sit at computer number five. And we say, truck 74, your assignment is vertical ventilation. Truck 74 copies vertical vent. And then you give me a report. Truck 74, we're, uh, we're on the roof. And then I can send you a picture of the roof with the conditions that it has. And then you can give us a CAN report. And then you can coordinate ventilation with the engine. So each computer could have a different unit respond to it and they could get a different picture based on what we showed them. So that's where we want to go technology-wise. Um, it's going to take a little bit of money to get there, but uh, hopefully we'll land, we'll land there someday, I hope, so we get more practice. <laughs>